I started, you know, everyone, you know, used to look at me like I was a joke and I got more doors slammed in my face you could possibly imagine. It took a very long time, you know, and the problem is now people want things like yesterday and, you know, and I'm not a very patient person at all, but when it comes to that, I am very patient, but you got to understand something. You got to have credibility, right? Like people want to like be motivational speakers. Like, what did you do? Like, you can't be a motivational speaker if you haven't done anything. Like, you have to have, there has to be val val validation on you've actually done something. Like, have you actually built a company? Do you have employees? How many? Like, you know, and people don't understand that. So, you know, I also indirectly want my franchisees to read that too. And I, and I, and I do when they come on board because they understand, you know, they understand the history of it. They understand what it's taken. You know, I'm the first to ever professionalize this concept. No one's ever done it before. I'm Mark Drager, and as an entrepreneur and strategist, I've built a multi-million dollar marketing agency. I've helped launch startups and transformed international brands. And yet, despite all the success, I still wake up every morning with the feeling that I'm just not good enough, that I've not come close to hitting my potential, and I may never achieve the high hopes that I have for myself. I believe that we all have something to prove to the doubters, to the haters, to the voices in our own heads. And so each week, I share real, tactical advice and the most interesting and inspiring interviews because my goal is to help those of us who have something to prove show the world and ourselves that we have what it takes to make it happen. Welcome to the We Do Hard Things podcast. Okay, today's guest is the founder and CEO of one of the fastest growing private companies featured in Inc., Gym Guys. Starting from almost nothing, he used the knowledge and connections he made as a personal trainer to build this disruptive at-home personal training brand into the giant it's become with over 230 locations in almost 30 states. Now, you may have seen him featured in the New York Times or Forbes, or maybe, maybe you saw him sit down with a little guy known as Gary V on his YouTube show, Ask Gary V. Knowing that this man has actually done the hard work, he's lived the grind and he put in the time to build his business. When it comes to leadership, uh, building discipline and doing the hard things, this is one voice that I think more people should hear from. I can't wait to share with you the conversation I had with the author of the book, Fuel, what it takes to survive as an entrepreneur and the man who lives and breathes the credo. If you wanna be in the top 1% of your thing, you can't think or do what the other 99% are doing. Josh York. So Josh, thank you so much for joining me on the We Do Hard Things podcast. Uh, I really, I was really excited to speak with you. So first of all, thank you very much for your time, all of that stuff. Pleasure. But, but, but first to start, I want to talk to you about perseverance. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the more that I looked into you and, and the, the more that I listened and the more that I read and everything else, I couldn't tell if you... I couldn't tell if, if you're an asshole who's just super determined and gets people to follow him and make things happen, or if you're genuinely a nice guy and, and the perseverance just comes from some deeper place. Are you a nice guy or are you a total asshole? No, I'm a very nice guy, man. I'm a very nice guy. And, and also since, since you and I can relate, you know, since we're both, we're both bold and beautiful, that's obviously another positive. So, um, yes, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very nice guy, actually. Very nice guy. And so is it just, I, I, sorry if I threw you off there or whatnot, but, but when, when people are as um, passionate and are as um, dedicated and, um, and speaks as openly as you do, you must be misunderstood, no? Sometimes, but you know what? Listen, man, I like to say eagles fly alone and uh, I don't have many friends and, and I'm, I'm totally cool with that. You know, I don't really, I'm not looking, I'm not looking for many friends, you know, um, I have lots of acquaintances. But, you know, it's very hard to understand someone like myself because I'm just wired very differently. I do things very differently. I seek discomfort on a daily basis. You know, when I saw your podcast, We Do Hard Things, I loved it because I, I love seeking discomfort. And um, I attribute that to a lot of my success over the years and, uh, you know, for the years to come. Well, and so, so for me, it, the, 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 the ethos or the premise of this is, is the fact that I'm not that way. I, I do not seek discomfort. I seek comfort. Uh, I, I like to give up. I like to get excited about something and then move on when it gets hard. 
And so I've had to teach myself this over time. And, and the reason why I'm speaking to you and, uh, and others like you is because my goal is to be able to learn from, from those who have done it before. Do you think that's something that you w- was kind of taught or, or was a lesson learned for that? Or is that something that's kind of baked within you? No, I was just always very different, man. You know, like, I, you know, some people would say it's weird. Some people would say it makes no sense, you know, but see, in, in the world I live in, weird equals normal and normal just doesn't work. Okay. Um, Why you know, not? Why not? No, no, normal doesn't work. You just do things normal. You're never going to get to the level you want to be. I see the problem is, see, like 90 to 95% of the time, 90 to 95% of people do everything to try to get there. But that last five, 10% is so hard. It's so hard. And people just fold like cheap chairs because, mm-hmm. you know, look, I've been mentored by some of the best in the world. Okay. And one in particular, Fred DeLuca, may he rest in peace, the founder of Subway. Um, you know, I, I was very close with him. He mentored me for quite a while. And, you know, one day he asked me, he said, Josh, let me ask you a question. What, what do you think is like the number one trait in a successful entrepreneur? And I said, oh, they got to be driven. They got to be passionate. They got to, they got to, you know, be able to, to go through all the pain. He goes, bing, bing, bing. The person who can endure the most pain for the longest period of time is the one who will be the most successful. See, mm-hmm. business, life, life, life has seasons, okay? You better make sure you build for the winter. The problem is most people just fold and they can't deal with pain. They can't deal with the, the rejection, you know? Some of the biggest deals I've closed, like huge deals, like seven-figure deals, have taken me like two, 300 times. You know, like it's, it's, just, it's just really just never, ever, ever stopping. Like it, it, it like almost turns me on when someone tells me no, because I know I'm going to get the yes. I just got to keep going after it and just going after it and going after it. And I literally just made a connection the other day can't disclose yet because I'm under NDA and it's a little early, but it's, it's happening with probably one of the largest companies in the world that I've been going after for four years to get into their store to do something with them. And I finally got a yes. I've been doing that for four years, but there's a, there's, how there's a method. Know, but, but how do you know that you want it? Like, so, so it's, it's not that I don't want things. I want things and I will go after things and, and I, I, I will see things through. I, just question whether I actually want it still. How do you know four years later that this is still what you want when other things come along that, that look just as good? Because I'm very focused, man. And you got to be very focused. You know, too many people like to like dip in too many different areas and they don't stay focused in one area. You have to believe enough in yourself and you have to be obsessed. Like when I tell you obsessed, you have to be sickly obsessed like, I am so obsessed. I, I don't own any clothes but gym guys' clothes. Like, literally, that's all I wear. That's all I wear. I always rock my brand all day, every day. Like, when I tell you I'm obsessed, I am obsessed. You have to be sickly obsessed. You know, there's lots of things that turn me on, like other opportunities and deals, and I get thrown into things, and I turn them down all the time. I know I, I have the game plan in my head. And some of those things I am going to start to dip in, but not yet. I have to stay focused because, you know, um, the journey's not easy. It's extremely difficult. And that's why people see other things and start to go into other things. But to build success takes decades, man. But the problem is now with social media, people pay attention too much to everything else. you got to focus on you and stop worrying about you, someone else's journey because yours is going to be totally different. Someone might be able to do it in a year or two years or 10 years. It might take you 20. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I've been surrounded around the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. And let me tell you something. You are who you surround yourself with. And I am, I am the master connector because I just know everybody from over the years of just working hard, building relationships. And every single one is pretty much almost exactly mirror image the same. It's crazy. Walk faster, talk faster, do things. It's just Everything is just on a different level. It's just on a different level. And... The problem is most people don't have the mindset because that my belief is business life is 80% mindset, 20% tactical. If you don't have the mindset, you're never going to succeed. And I do lots of hard things like difficult things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in an ice bath every day, 29 degrees. There's lots of benefits to it from the fitness side. 29, 29. 
I, I think the last person I spoke to was at 36. So you're taking, you're taking a. No, 29. I go 29. You know, if I, if I go into the sauna and someone else comes in when I'm about to leave, I won't leave until they leave. I'm the okay. first one. When I work out, I'm the first one there. No one will ever be so driven, me. competitive. That's, uh, you know, you know what you want. That's kind of your makeup. That's it. And you would never even know it because I am, I am the most low key guy you're ever going to meet in your life. Are never you? gonna, never gonna stop driving my pickup truck. That's never gonna oh, change. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is important. What kind of truck do you have? I need to know what brand. What what kind of man you are based on your brand? I have a Ram. Ah, there you go. I have a Ram too. <laughs> there you go. But I'm a well, Ford guy. I like, I, just, I like Ford. I, I like Ford too. I like the Raptor. That's actually what I'm gonna get next. So I got the email from Dodge the other night um, about the new TRX that's coming out. Yeah. And I was like, whoo, whoo, I, I need a new truck. I'm going to, I'm going to lease me one of these. And then I went to the build page and I was like $110,000 for a pickup truck. It's crazy. I don't, I don't think yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, man. It's nice though. That truck. It's nice. It, it is a nice truck. It is a nice truck. So sorry. So driven, you're competitive. You know what you want. You go after it. That's what you need to do in business. What do you tell the people who aren't made up, make like, you know, your, your leadership team, uh, the other entrepreneurs that you talk to, you may surround yourself with people like you, but, but how do people level up to, you know, if you're not competitive, how do you build being competitive? If you're, if you, you, yeah, you have to want it. You have to want it. It's, it's, it, listen, I, what I tell people to do is purchase a mirror and just put it in your house and hopefully you have one in your house and just stare every day. Cause that's, that's who it's up against. You're, it's you. That's it. It's you. I don't listen. Now, again, don't take this the wrong way because I lost uh, a franchise owner, one of my good friends, to COVID. Okay, 30 years old. He had no health issues, nothing. I lost him. So I don't want to make sure I put that out there so you understand so I don't come across insensitive. There's always opportunity. Always. The people who are weak are going to crash and burn. The people who are strong, the people who are savvy, they're going to survive. Look, I called all of like some of my top mentors when this happened. I said, you know, what are you guys doing? They said, you need to furlough or, or literally lay off the majority of your team if you want to stay in business. And I, I always believe in my gut. I always go with my gut feeling. I never do not ignore that, 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 that sensation I have. I didn't lay off one person. I didn't furlough anyone. And I lost millions of dollars. I mean, I lost a lot of money. Mm. And, um, you know, leaders always create new leaders. And a good leader is always a good actor or actress, because if you let your team feel your true colors, you're done. Now, when you see like the employment rate was at millions, right? Like the unemployment rate. How do you think my team members started feeling? Don't you think they were scared and nervous? Mm -hmm. And I didn't let anybody go. I didn't cut anyone's salary. I didn't drop. I didn't do anything. So what do you think they think about me now? Well, they have more confidence in me. They're like, wow, you know, Josh knows how to lead. He didn't lead it, you know, and, and, and I, there's a lot of love in my team because, you know, I'm very big on culture and culture wins every day of the week. But, um, you know, people literally like almost in tears thanking me, like couldn't believe how I even pulled it off. I had to shut off royalties and minimum fees and all types of fee. I, I had to shut off everything. We still sold franchises, mm -hmm. but you have to be relentless. It's very simple. And how do you get like that? You just got to want it. That's it. How does someone lose weight? You got to want it. That's in you, you know, that's in you, you know? And, uh, you know, the reason I always talk about seeking discomfort because the more discomfort you seek, the stronger and better you'll be. You know, most people like think, you know, when I do a keynote speech in front of thousands of people, I don't get nervous. What are you, I'm a, I'm a human being. Of course I get nervous, but I use that as fuel. That's fuel. And as soon as I start, I always end up getting a standing ovation because no one's going to connect or listen or hear anyone speak like me. That's a fact. And I know that. And anyone else who's speaking there at the same time I am, well, you better put yourself down because I'm going to make sure I go above and beyond and go deliver the most highest level type of energy and content more better than anyone else because that's how I think. I believe I am the baddest person you're ever going to meet in your life. And everyone else should believe the same things about themselves. But that's why it's very important to seek and just do it. You just got to do it. People just don't do it. How did you build that confidence? Because that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not natural. I, I, can so, see it, I can feel it. I've seen it in your work. How did you build that? So first of all, and I don't share this, but, you know, I did not have great parents at all. So, you know, it wasn't my parents. It's just, it was just over the years, I've just had to learn on my own. And, 
you know, did I make decisions that were not right at times, you know, and that, look, I, I've never t touched a drug. I've never been drunk. I don't drink alcohol. You know, I don't even drink coffee. Um, but I just, over the years, I've just, I've just taught myself. And again, like, I'm, like, you know, I'm just always very different. You know, I used to bike ride to the gym when I was 13, 14 years old, three, four miles each way. So pretty much like almost a 10 mile round trip around there, right? Every day at 3.30 in the morning when I had nothing to do all day. I don't understand still why I did that, but I just was very, just very different. But when I want something, I make sure I get it no matter what. Other people will sit there and wait and wait and wait. And I, I love when people say, oh, I was going to do that. Yeah, but you didn't. Oh, I wanted to go to law school. Oh, there goes three years. Oh, but you didn't. Because then someone like me comes in and I just take it from you and I eat it. And that's what it's about. It's about taking action. Most people don't like the TA. They like to whine and complain and, and, and talk about, oh, the world's so bad. Like everyone today, like TGI Friday. No, it's supposed to be TGIE. Thank God for every day. Not thank God for Friday. Thank God for every day. Every day, it's just TGIE. But um, people don't think like that, you know, because every day is another opportunity. You know, I have people call me up, friends of mine who are like, Josh, I really need your advice. Can you please help me? You know, my business is about to fail. I have no money. Um, what do I do? I was like, what are you doing right now? He's like, oh, the football game's about to go on. I'm like, well, that's a big problem right there. Like, I don't even watch TV. I've never even used Netflix in my life. I don't even, I've never even touched it, never used it. And people, when they hear that, they go, what? That's the truth. I've never, I've never used Netflix in my life. I don't have time for that. I prioritize my time and what's important. You know, um, I'm a, I'm an early riser. I get up at 3:45. It's actually 3:44 every single day, um, and um, you know, I, I make sure the hours of my day are used productively. You know, someone could be up the same amount of time and not use the hours productively. You have to use the hours productively. And I'm not saying you have to get up early like me to be successful. You have to use your time in a valuable way. One hundred percent. I I couldn't agree more. And, and I, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to come from the other end, you know, like I, I'm totally honest. I, I struggle. I can put together the most day, you know, I do get up early. I get up at 4:45 at the gym for 5:30. do my workout. I can put together a day that just crushes it. And then the next day just can't match the intensity. I can put together a morning or a meeting, or I could show up for a podcast like this and, uh, you know, I'm prepared and I know what I'm going to do and it's amazing. And then when this is done, I'm like, Oh, I've put everything into it. You know, like, you know, you know, like when you're on a treadmill and you're trying to run an all out in the back of your mind, you have the decision to make whether you're going to run an all out where you, you, your legs are shaking and you struggle to walk and you can't breathe and you're about to faint, yep. or you're going to run an all out like everyone else. And so it's like, I'm going to run an all out. There are times where I bring that. How do you, you know, cause, cause I've heard you speak about energy and the energy that you bring to things. How do you string these high points together to, to have more of that? It's called discipline because it's physically impossible to be motivated and have that energy every day. It's impossible, but I'm a very good actor. So you would never read me. No one could ever read me. I don't even play poker, but you would never be able to read me. You just never, it just, it just would never happen. It would just never happen, but it's called discipline. It's called discipline. Like for example, next week, I actually take off a week from the gym. I don't work out at all. I don't do anything. The only thing I'll do is I'll play hockey. Uh, be a very big hockey player, but um, I literally take off, you know, and now most people would be like, oh my God, like when I tell you, I printed out this article 10 years ago about rest and recovery, mm -hmm. and I still have to read it every day, each day I take off that week, because I'm so program and twisted in my head because it's look it's very beneficial to your body to repair tendons your nervous system because i don't work out i work out like if you worked out with me you would have to bring a, defib a defibrillator with you <laughs> i believe and I, you i believe and, you and, and, and that's the honest truth but like you, your body can't handle that type of stress and you, you start to burn out and if you keep pushing and pushing you will get injured so i've developed this routine every 12 to 14 weeks depending on how i feel i take off it's so hard for me that I have to mentally prepare. It's harder for me to not go than to go. Because Why? Because you, you, you feel like you're, you're, you're lazy. You feel like you're cheating. You feel like. You're no, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the high I get from training. I just get mm -hmm. so high. I just, I, you know, like, or the high I feel when I'm on the ice, like I, I just, I'm not the sit home and watch TV and, and be in the household. They kind of, I got to move 
always, I got to move. Like I'm, you know, like, you know, like even with my kids, like I'm, I jump in the houses with them and I go down the slides. Like I'm always, I'm just always at it. Like I just like to be involved, but you know, you don't want to create, you know, look, it's like nerves. Okay. Nerves in your body regenerate. So let's say you injure yourself, your nerves will, will eventually regenerate and, and repair. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the same type of thing you have to do with your mind and you have to program yourself into a routine. Routines are the most important thing in the world. I'm so calculated. You have a sniper outside my house. They'll get me every single day that like literally to the second, that is how calculated I am. Like literally to the second, every single day. I don't care if it's a blizzard, natural disaster. Even if I had the flu, it doesn't matter. I don't stop. I still do the same things every day. I've jumped in my ice bath one day. I remember I had the flu this years ago. I rarely ever get sick. Knock on wood. But I had the flu a couple of years ago, and I went to the doctor, you know, did the little test. He says, you have the flu. You're going to be sick for like two weeks. Swear. I believe, like, the ice bath, like, cured me. I went to the ice bath. I thought I was going to die. I was, like, literally, I had, like, 102 fever. I was shivering. I jumped in it. I swear, the next day I woke up, I felt fine, normal swear he gave me like the whole tamiflu I, I don't i don't take any of that stuff i won't put any of that in my body it's your mind it's all your mind your mind is so powerful i have the power to manifest anything i do and you might be like this guy thinks like he's a wizard yeah i do i think i'm a wizard that's what i believe and you know what i look i, I started this business out of my parents dining room with nothing and i'm I, today we are the largest personal training company in the world mm -hmm. largest and I've done it in a very short period of time. When I started my career, uh, I actually started in franchising. Uh, I worked for a franchisor at their head office. We had 1,500 offices in 89 countries and territories. And I was in their communications department and franchise development marketing. And so I've worked kind of with this. And one thing I, I know, kind of maybe this is too inside, but one thing I know is that, um, is that I've worked with the most amazing leaders. And there's always a bit of a disconnect between uh, – between the, the, the leader of an organization, especially when you go through franchising, um, and then the franchisees themselves. Mm -hmm. What type, and the reason I'm asking this is I imagine that my audience are like your franchisees. They're the people who have the hopes and the dreams and the intention and the skill set, but then they're gonna come through your, your onboarding process and their minds are gonna be completely blown, I imagine, <laughs> listening to the way that you talk. What, what do you tell them to get them to go from where they are to the way that you work? So the first thing I tell them, I'm very transparent with them. Very, very transparent. So I tell them, you know, you know how many people go to Harvard and decide to start drinking and partying and fail? So I'm telling you right now, you could fail this business. You could lose all your money, fail. And pretty much everything I just told you in the last, whatever, 30 minutes or so, I tell them. I'm just a very straight up kind of guy because you know what? Everyone wants to be successful, but, you know, see, it's very easy to say. It's not so easy to do. Yes, yes. You know, people started copying me, and I, I don't, I'm not bothered by that. Because, again, easy to say, not easy to do. And I just know who I am. And I could judge right away. You know, like one of these people who started copying me. Honestly, just by looking at his physique, just by looking at his physique, I, I, at that point, I just, I just wrote him off and I, I'm, I'm never worried about it again because you know what is there's a very big difference between a fit entrepreneur and a not fit entrepreneur. And you know what that is? It's right here. When I hear someone talking about their dad bod and how they look and they're proud of that and you know, you would never hear those words out of my mouth. So I, I lost 50 pounds over the last tw two years. Congratulations, uh, Bill. Well, thank you. I was, I, I'm not that competitive by nature. Um, I was never into sports. Um, you know, uh, anyway, I decided finally enough was enough. You know, I took my kids to Disney and we're looking at pictures and I'm like, you know, in, in the high 230s and weight and all of this stuff and looked terrible. And so I had to, I had to teach myself like the basics. I was actually talking to a trainer a few weeks ago during COVID um, my gym was closed. So I just ran like I would, I'd run five K's or 10 K's, five K, 10 K, five K, 10 K. And then when I got back to the gym and I'm on the treadmill, I'm like, I'm crushing it. And he's like, yeah, your cardio is like a lot better because of all this running. And I was like, I didn't know running could, <laughs> would make cardio better. Like that's, that's how little I knew, I know right, about, right. about physical fitness. But, 
Um, I, I would say that, you know, the discipline of going to the gym and proving to yourself what you're capable of and understanding that your body is stronger than your mind and that your mind will always give out before your body does. Those are all lessons that I'm learning and have to drill into myself time and time again. I struggle to carry that over to business, to carry that over to, to leadership, to, to uh, uh, goal setting, to uh, sticking, sticking the day together, to do the tasks that you need to do, with the efficiency you need to do it, to knock that day out. How, how, do you, how have you found you could bring the lessons you learn in the gym to the other areas of your life? I just lead by example with everything I do. You know, it's funny. I use my kids as an example. And, you know, I never, I'm not a very private person. I don't post pictures. I never share anything with my family. I'm just, I'm not that guy. But um, my son does everything. My oldest takes the garbage out. You know, we had to break down something over the weekend. He's outside with me drenched, sweating, helping me. We're, we're moving everything. I don't have to question anything. He picks up, he's finished eating. When he's finished eating, he goes to the garbage. Why? He sees what I do. You know, he knows how daddy rolls and he gets it. You know, I, 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 I've been teaching him and I've been doing a lot of things that he doesn't want to do. He doesn't realize it, but I'm doing them and he's learning. Like, you know, he loves, he loves the gym guys van. So I take him all the time in the van. Right. And um, I got him these little personalized business cards and we'll go out and we'll do marketing and I'll make him hand them out. And he's very shy. He doesn't want to do it but I'll make him do it. The door knock, man, the dreaded door knock, right? But, 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 but he's learning right there, you know, and he'll make like 65, $70 on a weekend. People just randomly, cause he's so cute. Give him like $10, $20. And we'll do like training sessions. I'll show up at like friends homes and, you know, come in for five minutes and say, thank you very much. I have to leave. But like all these things and the same rules apply to business, right? Same rules apply. Mm -hmm. You lead by example. I'm in fantastic shape. I'm super fit. My energy is through the freaking roof. I'm the first one in, last one to go. And that's how I roll. And everyone else follows me. But see, you know, the, the whole coronavirus and the whole, this whole COVID, right? It's been very, it's been a very great thing in, in many ways for, for many people, but they don't realize it because they didn't take advantage of it. Like, look, it put a lot of people in very uncomfortable situations, right? It still is. Well, yeah. yeah, and still is, you know, so it's testing you now this is going to pass. Like people think they're wearing masks the rest of your life. This too shall pass. Okay. It's going to pass. That's a fact. Now think about you're in business and someone walks in on Monday morning and quits. Do you think it's going to be that horrible or that traumatic compared to the virus um, and what it did to people and how it affected? No, not at all. But if you make it through it, you only become stronger because mm -hmm. you go into business, you better be prepared to be get, get sued not once, not twice, multiple times, get lawsuits, things happening, people quitting. You have to fire this one. This one broke that. This happened. This person lied to you. That's business. And people always say, what well, keeps you up at night? Nothing. Nothing keeps me up at night. And I used to suffer from anxiety horribly back in the day. Horribly. But I've trained myself. How? Okay, so, so I've been in business 14 years. Um, you know, it's interesting that you kept all your staff. We couldn't keep all our staff. We were at uh, 23 people last summer. We're at five right now. I mean, our business, we lost 80% of our revenue. Our business was hit really hard after 14 years of building. Um, I'm sorry. Well, but, but here's, here's the lesson I learned. This is the greatest thing ever. I, I, served, I, I, was, I started before the 2008-9 recession. And that hit us so hard that I was so afraid of a recession for the last four or five years that I actually hampered growth. I actually kept growth lower because I was so afraid that something would happen and it would all disappear. And here's the lesson I taught myself. Businesses go on. Like if your cash flow, if, 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 if you can control your cash flow and if there's, there's no shame in contracting if you're contracting for the right reasons so you can come back stronger later. That, that I taught myself this, this year, and I, I was afraid of that last year uh, and, and the last few years. But uh, where I was going with this uh, was that after all of these years of, of, of building, you know, stuff gets uh, taken away from you. Um, and I think for most of us, it's just like, uh, again, again, you know, I had, I, had, I had a staff member that I quite liked in, in August quit. Um, and it was like, Again, I guess, I guess we're not good enough. I guess, you know, things aren't right. And, and so I know it's all BS. I know, I, I know it is. I know that it's not true, that it's lies, that it's all up here. It's emotions and this and that. But at a certain point, do, do you bump up against the like, 
how hard does this have to be? Like, no, oh. never. I, no, never. You just, you just, the I, fuel, I, right? The fuel. I, I just know it's going to be very painful. Listen, I would tell you stories that would give you instant ulcers right now of things that I've gone through. <laughs> Uh, 99, 99999999999% of people would not do it. I've done things like crazy things. I spent a hundred thousand dollars when I didn't even have it. And I knew I would have it. Like I literally spent the money on something like committed to it. The guy obviously trusted provided what I was paying for. And I didn't even have the money at that time. I did that. I swear to you, I had $1,100 in my bank account. I swear to God, swear to God. And I like, I like signed off on big papers that would have put me in a very bad place. Right. And I came up with a hundred grand. I just, I, you know, I look at success almost like a video game. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to play video games when I was a kid. I don't really play video games. I'm not into that at all, but it always works out, you know? And like, if you compare it to like a game, like entrepreneurship, it's almost like you're playing Mario brothers. Right. And you, if you get to a certain level, Sometimes you have to start from the beginning and sometimes you get to start from that same point. But the difference and, and, and the advantage is just like in a game, you always get to live to see another day, mm -hmm. but some people choose not to. Mm. And some people just don't figure out, figure out there's always a way. There's always a way, but you have to believe that in your mind. You really have to believe that. And, and you have to endure the pain. It's very painful. And the other benefit, of course, is if you start again, you, you know, you, no one's coming along and erasing your memory, at least. That's something I never accounted for, was that the longer you were in market, more people knew you, more stuff came your way without even working for it. That was the first thing I, that caught me off guard. And the second thing was just underestimating how much retained knowledge and skill you actually build. So even if you are yep. starting from zero, yep. you're not starting from zero, right? Very true. Very yeah. true. You know, losing, losing and failing – I look at those as victories. That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it. <laughs> of course Be you do. <laughs> because when, 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 when you WTF, when you're willing to fail, yeah, that's how you learn. But if you do it again, that's on you. I wouldn't change anything. And I've made a lot of mistakes, over $300,000 of mistakes over the years. Um, and I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't even want the money back. I wouldn't change a thing. I've learned from it. And you almost have to kind of look like, you have to kind of almost look at money as just turning on the water faucet and letting it run. You can't, you can't even like get emotionally attached to it. You have to just be like, I'm going to spend a lot of money. I'm going to lose a lot of money. And I'm just going to look at it like my faucet's running because one day I will get it back and, and, and provide and do what I have to do with it. But at the time right now, when I'm growing this business, I can't think like that. How do you, um, so I, I, I think there's two schools of thought. I think, you know, there's a very corporate approach of, you know, what are your weaknesses and how are we going to work on them and how will we overcome them and all of this BS. And then there's the entrepreneur approach, which is I have certain strengths. I'm going to play to my strengths. Screw my weaknesses. Uh, I imagine that you play to your strengths, but, but what have you done to, you know, your weaknesses are over here. I mean, what do you do to address them, face them, get better at them? Or do you just literally write them all off and, and just, ignore them completely. So oh, that's a very good question. If you focus on your weaknesses, you're a complete moron. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I'm being honest with you because your weaknesses should be delegated to other people who are good at them. I don't focus on any of my weakness, weaknesses at all. I triple quadruple. I go only all in on my strengths and that's what I focus on. I know what I'm good at and that's where I put my energy and the other things I'm not good at. I delegate and bring on other people who, who are skilled at it. And do you not feel guilty, selfish, or foolish for doing so, or? No, not at all. But people know, like people know there's certain things that I'm just not good at. Like when it comes together, putting like a whole document together and having it come out properly, it's not me. I'll, I'll pass it to someone else. That's not what I do. But you want to talk about me about opening a door somewhere? Oh, mm -hmm. I'm the king at opening doors. The king. No one does it better than me. No one. No one. And so how does that, you know, when you have the opportunity to hire up the people, you know, around you, so, you know, you have, you have revenue, you're able to deploy the higher up leadership, hire up these people, hand it off, build communications, all of this stuff. You mentioned that you don't have a lot of friends, but what do you do in your personal life, right? Like, you know, obviously you have kids, uh, you know, you're in relationships, you got to address your weaknesses in, in that area now, or do you still play your strengths on that side? 
still play to my strengths. Still play to my strengths. I know how valuable my time is, and I focus on what's 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 going to be the most important to my time. My most important time is to my children, right, and my wife. You know, that's where my time spent. So, I don't. No, I don't. I don't. If I'm not good at something, I'll pass it off. I will not. I will not even touch it. It's a waste of time. You know, the productivity. Look, you only have X amount of hours in a day. You better make sure you're using them and using them appropriately. And most people don't. And that's a big, big problem. And that's why a lot of people never get to the next level. You know, people are just afraid to like, you know, people, you know, I always say everyone wants the gold, but most people just say, you know what? Eh, silver is not that bad. I'll just settle for silver. No, I want the gold, but that's it. But you know, it's, it's that, it's that uncomfortable feeling that people get in, you know, fear, see, fear is a great thing. Like that feeling you get, that scared feeling, that means you're getting closer to the opportunity to kind of really come to fruition and open up for you. But people just quit too early. Why did you write the book? So you're the author of the book, Fuel. Why, why did you write that? You know, I didn't want to write this huge book. I made it really short, but I just filled it with tons of content and made it very valuable. Because I want people to really understand, like, you know, the whole concept I created with Fuel Your Drive, which is the name of my podcast, the name of my book is Fuel. You know, if you look at the U, the U is being filled up with gasoline, red gasoline, because red's our color. Because it's all about you, right? Everything is pertaining to you. It's you against you. This is for you. The information is going to help you. But you have to be the one to actually take action. But I wanted people to get a little bit of a glimpse of what it's taken to get to where I am today and things that I've done because people don't really understand. People don't understand really what it takes. People think they understand, but they don't understand what it takes. And that's why I wanted to do it. You know, and I sold a ton of copies of that book, which, you know, I, I knew I would, but I really didn't do it for that purpose. Um, but, you know, it's like when I started, you know, everyone, you know, used to look at me like I was a joke and I got more doors slammed in my face you could possibly imagine. And sometimes I just wanted to just, I used to say to myself, man, if I could just get in touch with one of these big time CEOs and they give me the time of day just so I can just pick their brain and talk to them and get some advice. It took a very long time, you know, and the problem is now people want things like yesterday and, you know, and I'm not a very patient person at all, but when it comes to that, I am very patient, but you got to understand something you got to have credibility, right? Like people want to like be motivational speakers. Like, what did you do? Like, you can't be a motivational speaker if you haven't done anything. Like you have to have, there has to be valid, valid validation on you've actually done something. Like, have you actually built a company? Do you have employees? How many? Like, you know, and people don't understand that. So, you know, I also indirectly want my franchisees to read that too. And I, and I, and I do when they come on board because, they understand, you know, they understand the history of it. They understand what it's taken. You know, I'm the first to ever professionalize this concept. No one's ever done it before. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did it. Awesome. And, Thank um, <laughs> well, no, I, I think, I think it's impressive because, you know, I spend 60% of my time writing. I don't think people realize, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never written a book. I don't think people realize how hard it is. And I haven't done it because I don't think I have anything uh, yet that I want to spend that much time writing down. <laughs> yep. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yep. just what an undertaking you've done. So it's, it's a lot, but there's always time, man. There's always time to do it. You know, always time. So you're getting up at four 45, uh, 344. Lot, 344. Sorry. You're getting up at 344. You've mentioned a lot about your energy and about how you make the most of your time. What does, what like what does a day look like for you then are you like in bed at eight o'clock or 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 no no i wish i wish i would know you know um i probably only sleep four or five hours a night at max um and i take an 18 minute nap i try to at least every day 18 okay. minutes no, not a minute longer or a minute shorter 18 minutes um and uh yeah you know i i my, my day is just routine you know every day is the same thing i get up you know take a quick shower eat get my workout in, ice bath, uh, sauna first, ice bath. Then I go back into a, a nice shower. I'm in my office by usually 7.15. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if I'm traveling, same thing. Like, you know, people like to put alcohol in their room. When I call the hotel, I have literally my ice ready, my blueberries for each day I'm there, and I make sure I have a gallon of water every day. That's what's in my room. Other people got, you know, whatever, you know, drinks they like and – that's what I have. Uh, nothing changes. 
nothing changes. There, there's been times literally I've gone to like locations that I've had to drive in a, in a, with an Uber in the morning, an hour each way just to work out. So, you know, instead of like, you know, if, let's say I was working out at three 30, I'd have to get up at like one 45 in the morning to go just work out, but I do what I got to do. And, uh, sometimes I don't even sleep. There's been many, you know, I've pulled many all nighters, many, I why? almost want to, why, why do you do, why, why sometimes why? like, well, like not, I think most people will say, uh, cool, you're doing all of this and you're getting everything done, but, but you know, why? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm, look, I'm not saying I do this all the time, but in the past, I have many times just to close some deals. I've cased some places that I've had to be around just to meet one person, and I didn't know what time they came in, and I stood outside. And this also tie, ties into what I'm talking about, seeking discomfort. Mm -hmm. That's very uncomfortable, especially in the middle of the winter. People want to be tucked in their bed in the warmth and have a comfy comforter on them. And here I am sitting in front of a store waiting for one person to come, and I couldn't sleep all night. You know, I've done things like that. You know, I've taken, you know, I've been at conferences where I've stayed there all day, flew back on a red eye, can't sleep on the plane ever. I just never could sleep on the plane. I land, go right to work out, right to my office, at it again, no sleep. I like to, I, I just, it's your mind. It's your mind. I'm not saying it's healthy to do those things, you know, all the time, but you got to do what you have to do. That's it. You have to do what you have to do. And I always like to say, I'm going to do things that other people won't do. And I'm going to have things other people won't have. And if you have that mentality, same rules apply. I love it. I love it. Where did the five minute rule come from? You know, I don't know. I see all these people actually talk about this five minute rule. I, I, I am the one who had created this a long time ago, this five minute rule, but I was, um, I was, you know, used to train a very, very successful billionaire. And before I started my company, I asked him what he thought about it, and I ended up creating a holiday out of this called National Swiss Cheese Day. It's on August 1st, and in, in, two, in 2007, when I asked him, he laughed in my face and told me, the business was like Swiss cheese. You got too many holes in it. You'll never succeed, and you know, I was obviously really crushed when he told me that, but I went into my car after I sat there, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take five minutes right now. I'm the one that chooses my destiny, not this guy. And I'm going to show him. I'm going to prove him wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where the five-minute rule came. Fast forward seven years later, I'm on the front page of the New York Times business section. And it says, disrupting the fitness industry. He sees it, calls me up. I believed in you, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I go, Bobby, what are you talking about? You told me my business was like Swiss cheese. I don't even know. I, didn't, I know you don't know, but I created a holiday after this. And every August 1st, I call him, FaceTime him. If he doesn't pick up, I send him a video. And I say, thanks for the inspiration. I don't even eat the cheese. I just show it to him, and that's it. And uh, that's kind of how the five-minute rule came in place. I love it. I love it. You, uh, you know, I, I, you, earlier we were talking about Evan, my friend. You know, we on a podcast together called Something to Prove. I, I think that the, the need to prove to others or to the voice of doubt in your head, it may be a dangerous thing. It may not be a healthy thing, but I think it's an under leveraged thing. I think that it's so, I, I think most people take others opinions or, uh, you know, I, I was setting a goal for myself last year that I was embarrassed to tell people, not because I thought that the goal couldn't be reached, but because I thought they would think it's crazy. I'm not going to tell you my crazy goal because I don't want your doubt. But when I started telling it to people, man, does that fire me up. <laughs> You know, one, one person, one person told me that I was crazy. Like, like, not just like, Oh, you're crazy. They're like, Mark, you're crazy. You don't realize how hard this is and how impossible this is going to be. And I've seen other people do it and fail. Like, this is, this is crazy. You're crazy. And it's like, that's fuel. That's, that's great. I love that. Like what you're saying. 100% man. 100%. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you play on that dangerous side? Do you walk on that dangerous line? Cause, cause I understand why other people think that it's unhealthy, but but if you doubt me um, and I don't let it get to me, then you can turn that into like, just listen, I use tell that, you what I'm capable of. I use that every time. You know, it's so funny. You made, you made me think of something. I've never even shared this. I remember in high school, you know, um, you know, I've been playing hockey since I'm four years old and um, just, I'm just, I'm a good hockey player. That's it. You know, I'm not the one to I like kind of brag, but I'm a good hockey player. And uh, <laughs> I remember this one kid used to always, 
make fun of me and say to me like back in high school you know you know oh yeah you know you, you know you can't play and I used to always just think in the back of my head like one day's gonna come so random right years later years later like even after college I go to this open hockey right and is kind of like in Manhattan it's called Long Island City I don't know where you're from but um Toronto, Toronto got it okay Canada where hockey's born <laughs> that's it yeah man so um he walks in and I was like, holy smokes, you know, and he was like, kind of like, you know, shocked to see me. And, um, I don't know if he was thinking about it, but I was remembering it. And the guy was a goalie. And when I tell you, I lit this guy up like Christmas, like when I, I can't even explain it to you. And I remember at the end, so at the end of the, at the end of the session, he comes in the room and he actually brought that up. He goes, wow. I remember in high school, I used to always say these things to you. And holy smokes. And it's just like right there, it just felt like some like like a sense of relief. Like not that I cared, but it was just I can't explain it. But like the same rules apply. Validation. When some, yeah, just, yeah, just just like when someone said like you just gotta believe in yourself. I don't care what anyone else thinks, but I will prove them wrong every single time. You would never, <laughs> ever, ever want to bet against me. I love it. I love it so much. I'm so not wired the way you're wired. So uh, hopefully I can, I can uh, employ some of these tactics myself, you know, you sure can, man. Uh, you, you can do, you, you can do anything you believe. Of, well, that's the problem. I, I, I often don't, I said that I lost 50 pounds. I knew that, you know, with diet, I can lose 20 pounds easily, but I was like, Oh, I don't know if I can let me, 200. And let then me I tell did, you something. Like, yeah. Let me tell you something. Not to interrupt you. If you lost yeah, 50 pounds, okay, you can do it. Okay. You could do it. That says a lot about you right there. That's not easy to do. Okay. So I'm telling you, and I don't tell people unless I know, or I believe you can do it. You can do any single thing you want to get wired like me. You could do it. You just have to do it. Well, well, so that's the thing. It's like, it's like my next goal after the weight loss was like, well, percentage body fat, you know, like I'm, I'm still, you know, I, I look okay in a shirt, but, but, you know, I'm still, I, I still got to tone up more and get thinner and whatever, all of that stuff. Um, I haven't taken any action yet because uh, I, you know, I know that if I'm willing to do the things that I need to do, I will have the outcome. I question whether I am willing to actually do the things. I get excited about it. I want to do them. I start doing them. Um, I haven't started this you know, like, you know, let's get down to 10%, you know, body fat or something. Um, I haven't started it because I am still not sure that I won't give up along the way. You know what I mean? I hear what you're saying, but I don't even know why you think like that, man. Those, those thoughts would never even come in my head. <laughs> I, I, I would, you know, you, you should that would be, never you should even be, come across you. No, you should be, you should, you should literally, as soon as we're done, do something. That's it. Just start, start, Yeah. start. Yeah. That's it. I started a podcast. I didn't know anything. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just said, I'm going to start it. I had my first person on and I've had, I've had literally like the best entrepreneurs in the world on it. And some people I've secured in in a recent couple of days that, I'm, that are coming on it are big, big power players, man. Let me tell you, you just got to start. That's it. <laughs> well, I did start. I started by losing 50 pounds, but, but now I have a new goal that I haven't started yet because and you're going to start today. Yeah, doubt, doubt, man, doubt. That, like more people, I, I think, are wired like me than wired like you. The reason for this podcast is because um, I'm looking for the – I'm not looking for the baby course. I'm not looking for the simple thing. I'm looking for the hard things, for the next level things. But uh, I think, you know, in areas of our lives, everybody has something where they're just – you know, they, they say they believe it. They say they want it. They think they want it but they're just not willing to do what it takes to get it. You're right. You're hundred percent correct. That is hundred percent correct. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, what I'm hearing from you is discipline and start and do it and prove to yourself that you can do it. And, and the, 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 the facing, I, I can't I apologize. I can't remember the exact wording you're saying, but the, the facing discomfort or the seeking discomfort, I guess is what you said. Um, how did you come across that? Is that, is that just from the people that you surrounded yourself with? Because no, I've always done that. I've always done that. Always, always. So you just play to your strengths with full confidence 
and and be who you are and and you were you came out listen let, let, let's put it like this and, and and i'm just using this as an example i'm in very yeah. good shape okay very good shape you would probably think i took drugs <laughs> i've never i've never touched a drug in my life but no one ever works out the way i do okay it's just it, you gotta you just gotta have the intensity the intensity and the pain and, and you and you could you could train yourself to do that but you have to just do it you have to start you have to start and it all starts right here didn't that interview just get you pumped up josh's story can give us all the confidence and discipline we need to get it done okay key takeaways for me number one great leadership calls for confidence in yourself number two if you seek out constant motivation you must you must develop a discipline and number three if you're doubting your ideas if you have a fear about starting something you just have to do it. You have to move. You have to build momentum. You have to work to make yourself proud. I just want to remind you that you can rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts. It would mean a lot to me. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe already. If you want, you can connect with me on Instagram. You can just DM me. And remember, those of us who have something to prove and show the world, and show ourselves that we have what it takes to make it happen. But you have to think big. You've got to be bold and you must say yes. Why? Because as you know, we do hard things.